Hi, Cy here from Music Radar, and today I'm joined by Future Music's editor Cy Truss. Hi. And we're taking a look at Akai's brand new MPC Live. Yep, so the MPC Live, uh, this along with the MPC X, mm -hmm. are uh, Akai's two new additions to the MPC range. Yep. Announced at the start of this year, back yeah. in January time. Just for now, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep, so these two are significant because they're the first standalone MPCs in a few years. Yes. So back in 2012 time uh, when Akai released the MPC Renaissance, yeah. that's when the MPC range went from being the standalone uh, sequencers and samplers to... Controllers. Yeah, so basically being controllers for the MPC software, software. Yeah. but tethered to a computer. Yeah. These uh, two new ones are significant because they, as well as still acting as controllers, so you can still plug them into a computer and use them as a controller, yeah. but both also have their own processors on board, uh -huh. so they can run a version of the new MPC 2.0 software yeah. And, um, they, and completely they have, inside the box. Yeah. So no need for a computer. And sound cards and everything. They've got everything they need yep. to, um, to run alone. The yeah. MPC Live, in fact, isn't just a new standalone MPC. It's the most standalone MPC they've ever made because it's also got a um, lithium-ion battery in it. Yeah. So you can see we've got various audio connections going on here, but, but there is no, no power. No power. Yeah, so All gone. Uh, yeah. while it does come with a power adapter, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can charge it up, and on a full charge, like I say, you can get about four to six hours use out of it. And you think you've got a bound Yeah, itself? we. I was playing around with it yesterday afternoon, probably for a good three and a half hours, and it still had decent chunk of that's battery good. life left. So yeah, that's you know that's a good set's worth and, and your sound check included, really. Yeah, or so. you can kind of, you know, take it out, sample your friends playing, go and have a jam session, yeah, whatever yeah, you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah, field, so, so field recording, yeah. all that sort of stuff. So yeah. cool, it's it's cool, it's handy. Yeah. Um the hardware itself, you'll probably notice if you use the MPC touch. They look very similar. Yeah, it's basically layout wise all the same. Almost exactly yeah. the same. So same pad, same like lovely classic MPC pads. Yeah, got the four same, Q links. Yep, uh, the touchscreen yeah, is back touch again. Screen, yeah. Um, actual size wise, mm -hmm. it's longer, it's wider, and it's noticeably deeper and chunkier. Yeah. Obviously, Only that's a because bit. it's not. Yeah, I mean, noticeably, understandably, because it's got a processor and a battery, battery inside. Yeah. So also, it's understandably a bit heavier, mm -hmm. but it's very much on the correct side of portable. Yeah. Like yeah. you could. Realistically, getting a rucksack, you could probably take it on a flight as hand luggage. Yeah. So, you know, you, yeah. it's still very much a portable thing. If they'll let you, of course, but you know, yeah. who knows. Um, so, um, looking around the back, checking out the I.O. we've got in here. Yep. There is, it's quite a lot. You've got quite a lot of MIDI. Yep, two. so you've got two MIDI in, two MIDI out. Yeah, um, okay. So, obviously, you can sequence hardware and uh -huh. you can plug a MIDI controller in to play instruments or kind of samples yeah. through a MIDI keyboard or whatever. But it's also, also USB MIDI. Yeah, so you've got USB, yeah. the USB slots can uh, have a USB key in, like we've got one yeah. running some samples here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can load samples in, but you can also have uh, MIDI connections, so USB MIDI. Yeah. It's also got Bluetooth MIDI built in. That's so you can cool. yeah, yeah, so you can hook up a Bluetooth MIDI controller to play okay. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and potentially there's stuff down the line with things like able to link and stuff like that that could Potentially. Could potentially happen, yeah. so having that there is cool. Fingers crossed for that. Um, yeah. Um, for audio then, what, what's what's going on with the audio? So so for actual recording and sampling, so you've got a uh, balanced pair of jacks, yeah. which is what we're recording into at the moment. Mm -hmm. You've also got a phono input here, which has a um, ground peg here, which is obviously aimed at recording and sampling from turntables. Yeah, which we um, like to see. Yeah, there's probably an argument to be made that how relevant a turntable connection is in 2017. Personally, I'm a big fan of it because yeah. it's a nod to the history of the MPC yeah. and like, you know, but anyway, they're, they're built around hip hop beat maker, makers yeah, like sampling yeah, from yeah, vinyl yeah. and stuff like that. So. It's, it's the heritage there. Yeah, if it heritage. wasn't there, people would miss it and have a moan and therefore we like it, it's good. So yeah. you've got- more, more sampling from your old vinyl records is great. Yeah, so it's great. Cool. Yeah. And, and, then, um, and then obviously output. you've got um, a range of outputs mm -hmm. here, so You've, it's pretty flexible. Yeah. You've got headphones as well. As well, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty flexible. You've got an SD card slot, so again, oh, right. yeah. load more samples in. It's got a... Internally, uh, what's it got in the hard 16 drive? 16 gig 
hard drive. Okay. And you said that's expandable. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's expandable. And obviously you've got the um, SD card and USB. And USB. So you've got loads things. of storage options. Uh, it's also worth noting that it's it's got a whole ton of uh, samples included. It's about 10 gigs worth, isn't it? Yeah, something yeah. like that. So, so there's a lot of... Filthy amounts of stuff. A lot of content. Really. Yeah, um, yeah. And so and it's really easy to load your own stuff yeah. in. So there's plenty to be on with. Okay, so that's the, the physical box side of it. You know, the, the ins and outs. Um, Let's go inside um, and, the, and the functions therein. Yep. Um, what are you going to show us first? So, I mean, obviously you've got the 16 pads. Mm -hmm. uh, the most obvious thing you can do with this is kind of finger drum, play yeah. samples, sequence. So I've loaded 16 samples across mm -hmm. these pads. Yeah. Um, these are ones that I've nicked from Future Music Sound Packs, so these aren't built-in sounds. Yeah. Uh, they're really simple things. Mostly I've just put the a sample onto each pad, put a couple of basic effects on. Okay. Made a half formed beat um, in preparation for doing this video. What we're going to do is put a kick drum and maybe some hi hats over the top. Okay, of it. yeah, go on, let's show us so, how that goes. Uh, so, just to overdub something on this, um, if I just start playing, so here's our little half formed beat. Mm -hmm. If I hit overdub here, I'm now in recording mode, so I can just hit pads to start recording. Okay. There we go. It's okay. quantizing it automatically because um, yeah. you can set the quantize. Yeah, 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 set quantize. Yeah, yeah. Good. Set, uh, so let's. Uh, we've got a note repeat here, so let's use that to add some hi hats. Okay. So there we go. Little yeah. hi hat over the top as well. Uh -huh. uh, so it's as easy as that to um, record stuff. Okay. That nice kick, for example, if we were to go a bit deeper, you can do more than just loading a single sample onto each pad. Okay. If we went to program edit, so you can see this kick at the moment, you've got uh, two layers here, you've got a kick layer, and you've got a hi-hat, hi which we can adjust the um, volume of each layer. Yeah. Um, we can have a, a, up to four, four samples slots, on each yeah. pad. Okay. We've also got a filter and amp envelope, so we can, um, so yeah, tweak various nice. parameters here. So yeah. there's quite a lot of shaping you can do for each yeah. pad and yeah. each sample and stuff. So you, you've there's, there's scope to build quite a quite sophisticated sort of um, selection of your, dr your own drum kits drum and kits, your own yeah, samples yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, Good. and li like we said, there's loads of sounds on board. So if you don't want to load it up with your own stuff, there's plenty of stuff in there. Yeah, brilliant. Let's take a look at sampling and the the, the main draw here. Um, yeah. So sampling, obviously, a massive part of the um, MPC heritage. Uh -huh. Were the big things that it can do. Let's open up the sampler. Um, so for a really quick example of, what, um, of how the sampling works. Got an ovation circuit here. There we go. Uh, let's let's yep. just record a little um, okay. one-shot chord. Yeah. So we'll kind of change the thres threshold on our sample detection. Okay. Hit arm to record. Uh, and there we go. Literally simple as that. We've got chords. One chord uh, stab. Let's down. go assign to pad, and we'll hit this uh, last pad up here, and go keep. There and we've is. now got a nice little chord stab on here. So we go back into our just start our thing playing over to. That's simple. And there we go. Nice, little, nice, nice and quick. A little, a little chord stab sample. Yeah. So obviously there's deeper stuff you can do with the sampling. Mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. can do various bits of looping. You can edit the sample. Yeah. Um, you can loop things yeah. up. You can pitch shift it. Uh, yeah. Various things like that. Loads so, of stuff you can do. And yeah, that's that's just a really quick example. Okay. So the other, the big new addition mm -hmm. uh, here for the MPC 2.0 software, so the desktop version and within uh, the both hardware this edition. and the MPCX is yeah. the addition of audio tracks. Okay, yeah. So that means that uh, we can, as well as sampling audio, we can record full tracks of audio. Brilliant. And we can edit audio in there. Oh, great. So you're limited to um, eight tracks of audio within the hardware version. Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the desktop version of the MPC 2.0 software, you can have as many as your computer can handle. Yeah. So a you lot. can take things further. Sure. Uh, for a little example, so let's, um, we've got. A um, uh, if I unmute one of my audio tracks that I've put in earlier, okay, and go into audio tracks. Um, so I have got a little uh, bass line here. So this is what you can see is I can shift, you can move stuff, the around. audio around, yeah, um, and edit it. So let's have a little uh, play of this bass line quickly. Uh huh. So, as you can see, I've chopped this up a bit already. Yeah. I can quite easily drag stuff around, uh, re 
reverse things, uh, change, fade out, fade in. So let's see what the fade going on there. The fade going on here. Okay. So that's all on the fly. I mean, while you're yeah, so playing, that's, that's you can, just on you can the do those things. Yeah, and I mean, going down, yeah. it's worth saying the touch screen can get a little bit fiddly to do that, but. Yeah. Actually, they've implemented it really well. Yeah, and this um, it's be it's it's a better system than you might think editing on touch screen. Yeah. If you've ever used like iPad um, audio apps and things like that, yeah, it's you'll find that touch screens aren't necessarily the best thing. thing. For kind That's of where the rotaries editing. come in, into yeah, the mode, isn't it? Because you get some finer, yeah. finer control. So while this isn't yeah. quite as smooth as say you know something like Ableton Live's warping with a mouse and stuff like that, yeah. it's it's done. It's done pretty well. You yeah. can do a lot right in the box. Yeah. So um, the last thing it's worth having a quick look at mm -hmm. is uh, sequencing. So like I said, we've got okay. So now this now here. can control. Yep. So we're pumping Apple, MIDI yeah. out to our Novation circuit. Yeah. Um, so the what we can do is if we jump onto our second MIDI track we've got here, um, and we go to Pad Perform, which lets mm -hmm. us lay out a, a scale or various kind of chord patterns and things yeah. like that across the pads, um, and we can. Sequence our animation circuit as well. Okay. And easy as that, we can yeah. sequence and we can play. So, um, and you've got all your MIDI output, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for live performance, it's pretty easy to sequence and play stuff. This could be quite, quite the Quite the centerpiece, not not just in the studio, as I mean, I suppose the MPCX is designed for, but live. Yeah, but this lends itself really nicely to yeah jam sessions, recording, uh -huh. sampling sessions, okay, uh, yeah. studio sessions. So it is it's really yeah. flexible, and you can do a lot with it. Okay, so that's all the stuff it can do. Um, we, you mentioned that the, it's you know the the hardware version of um, the MPC software 2.0 is only got eight tracks. Yep. What, what other limitations are we looking at here? So, are there any? Yeah. So the other uh, major difference between the desktop version of the software and what's in the standalone box is uh -huh. you can't host uh, VSTs or plugins. Okay. So right. there is um, there's a good number of um, uh, effects built in. Mm -hmm. If we quickly just bring up one of these, so we can quite easily add effects to any pad or any in, uh, audio track or. Um, oh, quite so, a few, so there's yeah. a good number of effects, and they are cover a decent range. They're decent effects. What I would say is you kind of miss the um, uh, proper kind of UI yeah. of a plugin. It's basically it's, it's, it fits in with the interface of, of the yeah. software there. So, so yeah. you don't kind of obviously get anything in the way of kind of metering on your compression sure, sure. or spectra analyzing on EQs no. or kind of things like that. Yeah. So you know, compared to DAW, you do miss that a bit. But yeah. there's a lot of uh, effects in there. They're really flexible. They can do a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I would say is that there are a lot of elements to the um, interface of what's inside the hardware, yeah. and it can get a little bit confusing and maybe feels a little bit bloated. In sure. The, okay. Just in that you've kind of got um, you've got MIDI tracks, you've got audio tracks, you've got sequences, you've got song modes, so you can arrange things, you've got samples, you've got pads, you've got loop mode, and it does occasionally feel a little bit confusing to get around. That's mm -hmm. not to say that there's anything really wrong with it, or no. it's not frustrating, it's just there's a bit more of a learning curve yeah. than there is with some stuff. It's maybe not the most intuitive. That said, you can do loads with it, and it, bottom line is it's really good. Yeah, yeah. okay, the slotting in with, with, with other um, products out there and, and you know, um, your, your personal workflow, you're a machine user, yep. how does it compare? Uh, so there's there's differences. I wouldn't really necessarily what, say one is better than the other. There's yeah. an argument to be made that although this is you know portable, it's probably about the same size and weight as a thin MacBook at okay. a, at a yeah. small machine and an interface. They yeah. can do the same thing. Yeah. And obviously, with having a laptop out with you, you can run any DAW you want, sure. run any plugins. There, there's arguments for and against yeah. one and the other. But they, I definitely wouldn't say there's a sure, one's sure. victorious over the other. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot of people who will probably look at this and think it's not, it's a self-contained thing. The workflow's great. It's all yeah, in one box. It does everything I can. I need it. Yeah. To. If you're looking at it and think it appeals, mm -hmm. then 
there's there's no reason not to. No, sure. And also, it. it's worth mentioning that there is another um, device that occupies a similar, um, you know, the similar space, and that's Pioneer DJ's to rise. Yep. The, the SP, SP16. SP16. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, similar layout pads. It's, it's more performance based, right, that one? Yeah, I mean, so when we reviewed that last year, there was still some stuff that we would see added, which I think they have added since then. Brilliant. Things like um, MIDI sequencing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, and um, I've not had another chance to look at it properly since then. Yeah. Again, both, both good bits of kit. The Pioneer uh, DJ sampler is more aims at performance. It's mm -hmm. probably more of a performance thing. This is probably more of a studio tool. Yeah. But, you know, they're... they're Although, I mean, you can use it live, but it's it's the more studio functions that you yeah, can do with it. Yeah, of the two of them, this yeah. one feels like the better studio tool. That probably feels like the more geared up club. Slots into the DJ thing. kind of Yeah, but but ecosystem. they they both do both things well. Very well, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. want to yeah. say, recommend one over the other necessarily. One huge difference, of course, is price between those two, because this one comes in as a snip in comparison. Seven nine nine pounds. Yeah, so just under eight hundred, which actually is, I would argue for what it is, really good. Very good value. Yeah, I actually think that's a really um, good deal. Also, that's about twelve hundred dollars. We think we, that always changes. So, uh, you know, who knows? Um, yeah. So yeah, all in all, very full featured bit of kit. Yeah. So it what, is portable. So what I'd say about this is that I think over the last few years with the controller NPCs. Uh, there's been two schools of thoughts on them. On those, one saying that having a MPC that is a controller kind of loses the essence of a classic MPC, mm -hmm. and what's the point in that? Another saying that, well, it's 2017. Who needs a standalone sampler and sequencer? You've got your laptop, you've got the thing. And I think that's kind of caused some problems for Akai yeah. trying to trying to address both of those yeah, sure. sides of an argument that who both have a point. Yeah, yeah. And this feels like the first time they've properly cracked they've, that. They've, they're to feels like it. something that really, really well bridges that gap between studio, between live, between performance, between having a computer and not having a computer yeah. standalone. Um, and yeah, and it this, throws in that portability that nothing we've we've seen yet ha has got. So yeah, so it's for, ideal for, for me personally, this is by far the best yeah. MPC I've seen in some years. Okay. Well, this is also worth noting that MPC software 2.0 for desktops not available yet. Yeah. Um, so we haven't had a chance to properly have a go with this in controller modes. No. Uh, so we're basing everything we're saying on what it can do standalone. It's standalone. I'd be surprised if there was kind of any major surprises. No. Compared to what even we've used, with, even without the controller aspect of it, and, yeah. and the connecting it to your door, yeah. this thing does the job all by itself very well. Yeah, I mean, assuming that the desktop version can do everything this does, but with more audio tracks yeah. and plugins, it's only going to be an improvement. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully we've given you a brief insight into uh, MC Live's stand uh, Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video wherever you're watching it right now. And be sure to check out musicradar.com for all the latest news, reviews, and tutorials. Cheers.